So January 2019 is about to end and what better way to say goodbye than our cool new app series. Like always, all the download links will be in the description of the video. Let's begin. Digital well-being was an initiative from Google to limit smartphone usage. It's a pretty cool thing. However, this feature is only available for Pixel and few other Android One devices. Well, fret not. This new app, Action Dash, brings all the digital well-being features on compatible Android devices. The interface is quite similar to digital well-being. It gives you the total smartphone usage in form of a pie chart, an overview of app usage, and helps you to manage your notifications, etc. But unlike digital well-being, it also goes one step ahead and shows you the number of app launches in a week and how many times users unlock their phone. Overall, if you think you are spending way much time on your smartphone, this application can help you to curb with your smartphone addiction. Talking about applications, if you would like to launch applications from your notification tray, then try App Tiles. Just pick up your application and drag the tiles on top of the list, and that's it. As of now though, you can only launch 6 applications from the notification tray. But tell you what, wouldn't it be cool if you can move the notification tray to the bottom of your screen like the control center in iPhone? I know right? Well you can do that with this new application, Bottom Quick Settings. As the name suggests, it not only adds the quick settings at the bottom of the screen but also lets you toggle the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Flash, etc. You can even change your brightness. Though due to Android restrictions, you cannot toggle the mobile data and locations directly. So you will need the root access or a simple ADB command. That said, I don't really use this application on my Pixel 3 since the swipe up gesture comes in the way of the app drawer. So I recently changed my SMS app to Kite. Just like the SMS Organizer app from Microsoft, it also has a search feature, lets you copy OTP directly, backup SMS on Google Drive and show you the important SMS with one tap. But what I really like about this application is the passbook feature. So say if I want to check how much money I have spent in this month, then I can quickly set up a filter, choose a bank account, select the month and press filter. And there you go, it will give you a list of all the transactions. Overall, this application is made by keeping Indian users in mind, which although is nice, but it also raises some privacy concern. After all, we are talking about confidential SMS here. Red Paper is a simple wallpaper app which auto-downloads the hottest posts from subreddits and set them as a wallpaper based on the interval you have set. While the concept is not new, it's definitely a refreshing change for people looking for wallpapers. Finally, the best find for this new year is Parsec. So I've been using the GeForce now to stream PC games on my Nvidia Shield TV. Now imagine how cool would it be if you could stream your PC games on your Android. Well, that's where Parsec comes in. It lets you stream your PC games on any compatible Android devices. All you need to do is download the Parsec server on your computer and the app on your Android. Now hook up your Android with the Bluetooth controller and you're good to go. There is a bit of lag though, but less graphic intensive games like Lara Craft Go works fine. So there you go, I hope you find this new apps collection fun and useful. Know of any useful app that we missed? Let us know in the comments below. Like always, it's Vinal signing off. I will see you in the next one.